The dew line was constructed during the Cold War. The North Americans, Americans and Canadians, we wanted to know if a Russian bomber or uh, a squadron of Russian bombers was coming over the North Pole to bomb North America. This was a former dew line site built in the late 50s, and we're now cleaning up some of the contamination that was left from the 50s and 60s and 70s, and up until the late 80s when it was in operation. This uh, site, this far north, you can actually do construction for about two months out of the year. The ice and the snow covers the ground between nine and 10 months of the year. So by the time the contractor can do effective work, it's towards the end of June. So he's really got the months of July and August to do the work. Another challenge we have up here are polar bears. If it's a foggy day, we can't work because the polar bears can smell us through the fog, but we can't see the polar bears. So on very foggy days, all work has to stop. We're making landfills here for um, the non-hazardous waste, the non-contaminated waste, such as uh, cleaned out old fuel barrels, uh, structural steel, wooden timbers that have no con contaminated paint on them, and other objects that uh, are non-hazardous. We also have what's called a Tier 2 landfill, which has low levels of uh, contaminated soil, low levels of PCB or low levels of lead. If it's high levels of lead or high levels of PCB, we box it up into special crates and ship it to special disposal facilities in the south. At the end of this uh, project, this half billion dollar project, we hope that the, most of the north, where the dew line sites were, have no hazardous materials left anywhere around, and the sites have been regraded to look as natural as possible. The only things we're leaving behind are landfills, properly constructed engineered landfills, and they'll be across the entire north from Alaska to here at Cape Dyer. There'll be about 125 landfills left when we're finished.